Hi, this is JP Newman on Investing on Purpose. And on today's episode, I have a very dear friend, mentor, sensei, and this might be the episode that I'm most excited and most nervous about doing with you. Tristan Trescott, my friend of how many years now? 20? My brother, it's been over 30 years. Oh, please. Yes. Oh my God. We were just little youngsters. Little youngsters when we met, which is a whole story upon itself, which yeah. we'll save for another episode. But, you know, when we talk about investing on purpose and bringing your why and meaning into your business, you really can't tell the story of how to bring it into your business until you brought the why into yourself. And I can tell you from my experience, it happened to me about, 10, about nine, 10 years ago, and it was very, very painful and difficult, but life brought me to a moment where I had to face my demons and my shadows and figure out my why as a human being before I could ever get to investing on purpose with Thrive FP. And Tristan was my good friend, sensei, coach, who really opened me up and my soul up in a time of great pain and fear and anxiety to helping me get through the pain and to the other side where I could find joy, pure joy, love, and a lot of the way my life lives now, which I'm so grateful for, came really from that pain and that moment in your coaching. So thank you, and I'm so glad to have you on uh, this episode to talk about it. I'm just sitting in the manifestation of what happened. We're in this beautiful place, yeah. this beautiful business that you've created, looking at the gap from where we first were talking yeah. and what you were going through to what you've created is such a testament to the power of looking at the why, being willing to face those inner demons and work through it. And what you've created is incredible, but I think the journey is very important for us to unpack. I agree. And I'm really grateful that you're willing to do it because I think it's going to help a lot of people who have so much in front of them, but they might feel stuck right now. Yeah. Like as we grow as entrepreneurs, we sometimes say every level, there's another devil. And so we want to unpack your story and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was interesting for those who have listened to some of my past episodes. You know, this was past. I was not struggling. This was the point my company was actually starting to make money. So, you know, I kind of thought it was smooth sailing, hitting 55 miles an hour throw on the cruise control, life is good. And then bam, as I'm making money, as the company's growing, you know, I hit a roadblock and the roadblock was um, a lot of fear that I wasn't expecting coming up and anxiety um, that was becoming like frozen. And a lot of it was around, if you remember, I had two kids, two baby kids, and I had a, a mother-in-law dying in my house at the same time. And, and so death was like right in my face watching my mother-in-law die in my house and then realizing I had two kids that life is precious. Life is transitory. You can die anytime. You're, there's no guarantee. And that immediacy and that, and all of a sudden I think my paternal instinct is I want to be alive for as long as I can to watch my kids and realize I had zero control, not zero, but I didn't have full control of that. It threw me into a panic to the point where here I am making money. I finally had gone through a lot of my hurdles. My business is starting to grow. I'm closing the door. I barely get into the office every day, closing my door and weeping in fear and anxiety, just frozen. And uh, and that's when I met you and well, I and started going to your dojo here in Austin, Texas. And I thought it was a karate class when I met you. I thought, oh great, I'll get a little fit. I'll uh, work on the muscles, and uh, that that sounds great. And uh, turns out it was a little more than that. What was beautiful is when we reconnected because we have known each other for decades and then we reconnected here in Austin at a friend's mutual party that we were both at and you had asked me, what do I do? And I said, well, I blended together many of the things that I love about martial arts and meditation and these are things that both you and I love and it's this aggregation, get the whole thing done, all the things doctors were recommending in one class and you were like, sign me up. Right. You were ready to go. And this is before this trigger that you talked about it death was. being in your face. It was. And so so you had already started coming to classes. So we had reestablished this relationship. And then this trigger happened in JP's life. And he was already part of a dojo, which is a place of transformation. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So a dojo is typically a martial arts school, right? Where people come to learn fighting. But we always say in the martial arts, you're, you're mastering yourself. Mm. You know, it's not about conquering others. It's about personal mastery. And so here JP is fighting the biggest fight of his life. Yeah. I had never seen you in this much pain no, since I've known this you. This was like definitely one of the worst. And it was a full year of just anxiety, depression, and just my mind. My Literally, I, I think I told you, 
It feels like my mind blew a circuit. Well, he was shutting down. Yeah, there was so much angst. Yeah. I would get calls from you. We started doing coaching outside of the physical training, in addition to the physical training, which is important to talk about, I think, because all of us as entrepreneurs, as, as we're growing businesses, our bodies, they get blocked sometimes, right? We sometimes say issues in the tissues. And I remember as we were doing the coaching, sometimes you felt so blocked, mm -hmm. you couldn't feel anymore. And yeah. it was like trapped in your body. Your mind had become embedded in your body and you were looping. And so when your body feels bad, it sends signals to the brain. And then the brain goes, shit, things aren't working for me. I'm in this stress mode, send signals back to your body and you got caught in the loop. Yeah. And we had to get you out of the loop. And so we did it through the training and you know, the number one, thing was i just said just show up hmm. and there were days you had to drag yourself to the dojo right oh, for sure you didn't want to go no but you always came i gave you a nickname do you remember it it was discipline yes <laughs> i gave him the nickname discipline i said just show up that's the most important thing and you did brother yeah. you showed up and you did the work and it was uncomfortable do you want to talk a little bit about that like as you were starting to process what was going on well yes and i do but also with the your dojo wasn't just a normal dojo. It wasn't going to like the Chuck Norris Academy of Karate Kid. It was, yeah. it was, it was good. I mean, we learned a lot about punching and hitting, but in between, you always talked about, you know, through the body, it's in and through the body. You, you'd always bring up, and in the end, we would meditate. We would do a five minute meditation at the end of all, at, at the close, and really like the idea of respect, honor, uh, the mind body connection, the spirit. So there was always little threads. So it's like you're kind of using your body at first to wear the mind out a little bit, so you can actually. <laughs> take in those pearls of wisdom and be more present than maybe we would ordinarily than ordinarily would be. Well, if, if you move the physical body, there's so many beautiful things about martial arts, depending on the style. And so what we were doing was physical training, but also internal training. Yeah. So there's an internal art and you were practicing with us Qigong, which is a moving meditation. Yeah. So we would have these moving meditations. And then at the end, after you've got into your energy body, you sit to meditate. And it's in that moment that the sand settles at yeah. the bottom of the glass. Well, at my point, I wouldn't say the sand was settled. It settled enough that I could feel a little bit versus feeling nothing. You used to say to me, I'm going to call you sensei on this, this thing, because I remember you'd say to me, I said, I can't feel a thing. It's been a long time. I'm just numb as can be. And you said, just think of it as on a cloudy day, there's clouds and you just think all you see is clouds. And you just think the weather is just horrible and it's cloudy. But remember, above those clouds, the sun is always br shining bright. And your goal is going to be to find the sun through the clouds. But the sun is always there. It's just your ability, working, working your magic, working your practice, the, the, the physical practice and the mental practice of being able to get through the clouds to see the sun. But never forget that the sun is there. And that really stood with me a lot during that time. And we talked about when you're in an airplane and you take off and it's cloudy and rainy. And when you break through those clouds, right. I call them karma clouds. You break through, you see the sun. So you had to use the physical training into the meditations because all our students always say, if I meditate in the beginning of class, it's hard. But if I meditate after movement, it's so much easier. Yeah. And you can break through those clouds yeah. of the mind yeah. and experience the sun. So you had a particular meditation one time and we were guiding through like this feeling of being like a Zen master yeah. and being up high. Do you remember that? I do. What did you feel? It was amazing because it was like again after a lot of hard work with you and, and then we started doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching to try to break through the anxiety and kind of like and, and a lot of what you said was don't think about what you don't want but just let's start focusing on what you do want and then you get you have you have all kinds of fun tricks and sayings and different things different things different like basically processes and procedures you could do that basically to take the thought that's kind of looping and how to break the loop so number one was we had to get through just the, and the, the paralysis of the fear and the anxiety. And I'd say once we, once, like once you get to the point where you're like, Oh, I actually have some control here. It's, I'm not totally a slave to this fear, this panic, but I actually have a little bit, I mean, I have full control, but I will like, I sort of started noticing you a little bit of control. And then you, we got to kind of go to a different phase through our coaching, but you, I, I was so far away from being able to get to my why I was kind of just in survival mode. So you got to get out of survival mode and start working your magic and working your tools so you can get to the magic place of your why. But again, that's a luxury that I didn't have until we kind of went further through. But I, that, that time you mentioned about the meditation was kind of like, as I was breaking through the paralysis, you, you took us through a meditation where I actually for like, I was feeling just the Zen and the feeling of the peace and the joy. 
And at that moment, it was like one of those aha moments of like, aha, I have a little control here. Maybe this isn't going to grapple me for the rest of my life. And maybe there's a chance for, for joy and that I actually have more control here than I think. That was a big moment. Uh, yeah, that, that was a, that was a really, really big, big moment of just like breaking through that, which led to the next step of just more and more moments of starting to take ownership of, I, I can own my emotions. Like they don't own me. I can, I can actually break through this. I remember you, um, I starting to starting to identify the things that were the irritants in your life. You had that trigger, that fear of yeah. death and seeing your impermanence. Yeah. Then the father, the protector, the provider, how much you loved your sons. Right. Yeah. And we started to shift the conversation away from the fear into the possibility and of who you want to be. Right. And that's a beautiful bridge to cross, but you're right. I think you have to first get your body back in control and start to feel a little bit because there was a numbness. And when the body is shut down and the anxiety is there, we can't see the forest for the trees. So you kept training. Right. It was your physical practice and your consistency yeah. and starting to implement meditation, which is really useful. A lot of people benefit from meditation. Definitely. Right. Definitely. And then you started to feel better and started to gain clarity. Yeah. And then there were questions that led us to the why. Yeah. And those questions, we started to unpack what was important to you. Yeah, completely. Well, part of it also, instead of like a lot of times when we're in fear, your brain is actually seeing what you don't want. I don't want to die. I I'm afraid this is going to happen to me. Like we're, we're, our mind goes into what you don't want. But then what we started unpacking together is, okay, once you're past what you don't want, what do you want? <laughs> what do you actually want from your life? What is your legacy? What do you want to feel? Not just like, what do you want? It's not like I want to be 10 pounds lighter or I want to be, have a million dollars in my bank account. It's like, what are the emotions? What do you want to get your brain to trigger to feel? And what will it take to do that? And how, you know, and kind of working it from that direction, which was really hard, but fun work. It's, that was another year of you and I really working closely together, coaching. If I remember, we did some vision boards, a lot of conversations, a lot of processes. You took me through um, last day of my life, going down into the grave, last day of my life. And what, is, what was your legacy? What was your life all about? Like, what were people saying about you? Were you a good father? Were you a good leader in the community? Were you a good entrepreneur? Were you a responsible person? Did you make any mark on this planet? And that's a hard one to look at. That's actually really hard to look at. If you really get out of your head and you really go into your body and you think about your last day of your life and what, what was it all about? If that was a really emotional um, and meaningful moment to me to really motivate to like, wait a second, this isn't a dress rehearsal. Like every day matters. It's not like I'm 38 and I just need, like it's like now matters and every day matters. This moment right now, this moment right now, between now and whatever the end of your life is, is so important. This conversation is so important because you have the opportunity right now to ask yourself, who do I want to be? If you reverse engineer your life, I asked you, what did they say about you? How do they remember you? What is your legacy of love? What do your boys say about your life and who you were in the representation that you provided for them through every day moving forward? It's very emotional. It's intense to ask these questions. Yeah. You have to face some stuff, right? But how beautiful you get to shed some stuff too. And you start to lean into the hero. We got into the heart. We started talking about the heart because this is where you're going to feel the most. You can think. We are all pretty good thinkers. We can yeah. build businesses. We can create schematics. But without that heart behind it, the true why, a business without heart is going to get jacked up. Completely. A life without heart what do all the warriors talk about? Heart, spirit. What does grandma tell you? Follow your heart. Trust your heart. We had to ask questions about what's going on in here. Yeah. And I was like, brother, what do you love? Who do you want to be? You started to write a statement, like a mission statement for your life. Yeah. And it was about joy. It was. But in all aspects, like it was easy. And I think one of the things that you helped me clarify is like people sometimes think that like what creates joy? Well, if I just had money, I'd be happy if I just had my this relationship, I'd be happy if I just had this car, this thing. And then you realize that it's, that's the wrong, that's the opposite way of thinking about it. When you start from your legacy, from the day you die, who you want to be, I, like for me, I wanted to be known as a great father. I wanted to know, be known as a respected leader in my community. Someone like respected who made a difference in their community. Uh, I wanted to be someone who was a, a responsible business leader. I wanted to be somebody who made a dent on this beautiful planet called Earth. If you remember, I think the words I used was, I want to be use my curious exploration, my childlike 
curiosity to make a dent in this world or curiosity to make this world a better place. Starting with my family, myself, because you gotta be, if you don't have yourself, you have nothing. Yourself, my family, my community, and then this magnificent planet called Earth. And that was the order that it kind of, and I realized it was all important, but I'm in the center of that because if I can't generate that own, own, own emotion through my own skills, you can't do anything else. That all has to come from like that clarity within you of being able well, to generate those It was beautiful to, to teach the three dojos. So when you come to a dojo, when anyone goes to train, they enter into a space, you leave your shoes and your ego at the door, you bow, you step on the mat, and you start training your body and your mind. That's the main dojo. And, and that's amazing. But a good teacher is going to tell you there's an inner dojo, right? The real battle lies within, not in competing and fighting with other opponents. And you started to do the inner work. But then there's an outer dojo, which is the rest of your life. How does it translate what you learned and what you uncovered in your soul into your relationships, into your business, into your community, into your charity, into all the areas of life? And you had made that circle, which reminded me, yeah, we went through that mapping process, but in the center the congruence, the hub of all of it was your core why. Now there was no fragmented focus. There was 100% congruence. This is who I am, this is what I believe, this is what I stand for, these are my core values. And then you started to shape them using your mind into purposes in all the areas. But all the purposes would come right back to your to core the why, single which why. is interesting. I, I do this now with a lot of people. I have a lot, I mentor a lot of people and it's funny, like men are worse than women at this, but like they think, you know, their why, they go to a, a description but they don't go to a feeling. So wh why do you want this? Why do you, why do you want your business to grow? Because it would make me feel really good because of this. And like, you're like, that's a description. So like, why do you want, why do you want, you know, why do you think you want a big house so you can help people? Like, why is that important to you? And, and you did, you, you, you killed me with this. I mean, it was because it, it takes layer after layer because ultimately it seems like we go through a lot of thoughts and like, we think we have these ideas of what we want or the why, but the why is actually at the end of it is a feeling. Yeah, it's not, it's not in your head. It's, it's not in your head, heart, man. It's but like, for all of us, and I've seen it so many times for myself and I've seen it in others, like we struggle because, because that head has all these narratives, but all the heart really wants is the feeling. And then the feeling generates all the other stuff almost like doesn't matter. But then each part of your life, your relationships, your wealth, your health, all of it, your currency, it, it all comes down to back to like that main purpose of why are we even here, you know? Uh, and if, if you don't know that, if you're not thinking about it, if you don't really get clear to, on the emotional level, like you may think you know, I thought I knew for a long time. It took, it took us a long time to kind of get there. But man, when you know, like you know, like you know, and it's not in the head and it's not, you know, doubt disappears. Fear disappears yeah. because you are connected to an inner drive that is so powerful. Yeah. You become unstoppable. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the show, look at what you've created. Yeah. But you never lost your why. Your why, in fact, it evolved. It does evolve. It's gotten cleaner and more purified, and you're getting um, feedback from all the actions you've been taking. It's refining that ability. But you're stronger than you've ever been, and you're mentoring people now in a way that you weren't before. Of course. It's incredible. But we can only lead as far as we've gone. Right. That is, that is completely true. <laughs> right. So, you know, again, it's part of the creation of the show, Investing on Purpose. It's, it's, it is really, it seems so easy. It's easy to call it Investing on Purpose or Social Impact, but this is so much bigger and social impact or ESG or wanting to do the right thing. I often say that 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 really you think about wanting to create a purpose-driven company is actually, I use the word selfish. I don't mean I say it's selfish and selfless. It's selfless because you can do so much good for the world, but it's selfish because I don't know of any other map that's gonna make you happier as a human being than getting past your thoughts and into your heart. And until you do that, you're kind of wasting your time because whatever you achieve will fall flat. And I've been there. I got my first BMW, I had my first large check, made my first million, and it fell so damn flat until I found the why and, and, and the emotion that generated behind it. And it's the essence behind this show, as you're saying. And if you trace it back to that initial feeling, you maybe didn't have the vision for this yet, but you knew what you wanted to feel. You knew you wanted to make a difference. And you knew you wanted to take the business that you had to a completely different level. And you wanted to help people heal through their financial journey. Yeah, that's right. That was a big remember breakthrough. That? Oh, I remember that session with you. Yeah. Right. So look at what's been created because you got connected to your heart. Yeah. And, and that's why this show exists. Because if other humans can hear that and feel that, they can create so much beauty and abundance and there will be fulfillment. But without it, you and I both know it ends up feeling empty.
And we are going to do a second episode, Tristan, because while I have you here, that's actually going to give the audience more of an idea of how to do this. I know this sounds like, you know, it is hard to tell my story, but I think it's an important story to tell because it's the beginning of a roadmap, but there will be a, another episode that's going to be more of the how and a little more of your work we're going to talk about too, of like, there is a roadmap out there. So it's not just like a story to listen to. I'm hoping that's a story that inspires and then ultimately will give you access to a way that you can go through your own journey and find your own joy and your own why and your own mission. Cause we all have one. I really, I believe, you know, I don't care what religion you are, what you, whatever you think the higher power or we've all been given these incredibly special gifts. Like we all have great gifts and we all have like something to shine really bright. And for some people it's Elon Musk, you can say, which I'm not sure about shining bright or not, but it could be, everyone has to think it has to be big. It doesn't have to be big. It's, it's big. What's big is what's in your heart. It could be being the best mother, being the best father, you know, running a three person business or running a 300 person business that almost doesn't matter. But if you're doing it from that spot and you have the joy, you're already one in life. That's you've won. If this is a wealth show, then that's the secret to wealth. You know, beautiful. Well, I, I love what you're saying. I love that there is a map that gives somebody a, a path. I love that there's mentorship that you're holding space for others. Now Yeah, you're encouraging that personal mastery. And yes, I believe that if we do these things, we can make such a difference in people's lives, but we will feel so happy knowing that we made that difference. Completely. There's one more piece I wanted to share, because it's actually funny, even in the office that we're recording in now, when, once you kind of get to that life purpose statement, you know, call it the paragraph, uh, whatever it is, four sentences, you can get, the fun part is then we started doing visioning boards together. And if you remember, we did different aspects. If you, I, don't, I don't remember all that, you called it the wheel. And what, what are the aspects of your life on a wheel? I forget. There's Well, here's, here's what a lot of people do is they take all the different parts of their life and they put it on a wheel, right? Which right. is very helpful. It works. And then hopefully you put you in the center, right? You are the anchor. Um, and I used to put spiritual practice on my wheel and my physical health on my wheel and things like that. And one day I realized uh, through my training, I, I am a soul. How can I put my spiritual practice outside? That is what I am. So I moved it to the center and it mm. became the hub. Mm. And then I noticed this because when I grew up training martial arts, we have a t-shirt with mind, body, spirit on it. Everybody probably knows that, that particular framework, mind, body, spirit. And today we talk about physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. We pulled spiritual to the center. And I knew that if you took care of your physical body and your mind, you could stay connected to your, your soul, your heart, your core why. But anytime I let go of my physical training, I suffer. Mm. Anytime I get into my head trash, I suffer. So I pulled those two into the center of the map. So we'll unpack that later. But now what's left on the outer wheel, your relationship with your family, your larger family or your tight knit family and, and, and your pups and your cats. Right, sure. <laughs> and then you've got your environment, your home, your office where you spend a lot of time. And as you think about this, it's either each one brings your energy up or brings your energy down, right? And so you can kind of start scoring this thing. And then you start looking at your intimacy, your intimate relationship with your main squeeze, right? How's that doing? Because that can really plummet or that can really skyrocket. Yeah. And you start to see all these different moving parts. You look at your friendships and your community. Am I hanging out with the people that I love? Is yeah. this, you know, and you look at your adventure. Are you spending some time? You're having some fun time. You're just working all the time, right? And then you look at, your, are you giving back? Are you contributing? Are you tithing? Is there charity that you're involved in? How are you mentoring others? Yeah. You look at your business, you look at your business, your career, and that. And then, of course, you got to look at your finances. Right. And when you look at all these different, we call it the grade eight in our map, now you can start to see which one is pulling you down like a leaky bucket and the ones that are doing well. And you got to identify, and then you can go in and heal them. But you don't heal by looking on the outside. You have to go inside first. <laughs> and we talk about it like uh, the rising tide lifts all boats. One of the things also I thought was really interesting, there's so many programs out there where it's like lose 20 pounds or make a million dollars, your first million, here's the seven steps to a million dollars. But you, what you taught me in that wheel is that you think about it, like let's just use a goal. Let's say it was 20 pounds, which, you know, or money. You said to me, don't make it about the 20 pounds. What is the 20 pounds off gonna do? How is that gonna affect the inner core and help you support your mission statement or your purpose statement? So what would 20 pounds do? Would it give me more energy to be that family man or that husband or to give that much energy to inspire and heal. So now it's no longer this empty shallow goal of losing 20 pounds. It's like that 20 pounds is gonna do something that gets me right to my life purpose of like, I'm gonna have more energy to be that family guy. Oh my God, this is really, 
which is going to bring me joy and bring me happiness because that's really what I ultimately want at the end of the day. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're connecting your money to get it because again, everything's everything sort of starts to connect to that emotion and you're just like, now these goals, there's a reason to do them. You're more motivated and it feels quite frankly, a lot more powerful. I mean, we all know that like, you know, by February, most gym memberships, everyone joins in, you know, December 31st and quits by uh, 30 days later because it's, it was the wrong, it was a goal without a deep, anch- with, uh, without a deep emotional anchor. And you did a wonderful job of teaching me on that will about none of it matters if it doesn't tie into each the one of those feeds back into your center. Yeah. If you're out of alignment with where you're coming from, you will weaken your center. Yeah. Okay. So the master knows how to hold their center and every moving part is connected to his center. Right. As soon as he loses that and he loses focus on the why, it becomes a drain. So let's give one example. And I'm going to have Alex, the producer of the show, when we get through. So where we're sitting in this office was a dream of mine that we did on a vision board. And it was, what it was is I, at the time I was in a very boring office. And my dream was after being in a really boring corporate office is I wanted something. I think what I said to you is I wanted to connect to nature. I wanted to feel inspired. I wanted to be a real estate. Who does private equity in like a beautiful, inspired, creative atmosphere that like lifts people and has energy to it and that it doesn't feel like you're, you're working your life away. And we're going to cut to some shots of this office. And if, the funny thing was we both knew who owned this office, but it wasn't for sale at the time. And, but I, but I cut, I took pictures of this office as my example on my vision board because I knew this office would give me the energy to create the kind of company called Thrive FB, which I didn't know the name of until you and I co-created like this idea of having a boring real estate company that can actually serve purpose through financial healing of people. Like we we made all that shit up together, right? You you went in and you create, but (laughs) this this beautiful (laughs) place, I mean, it's unbelievable what he manifests. And as he was sharing with me what he wanted, I was like, wow, wouldn't that be rad? Like, I don't really know anyone who has that. I know. I, so I, I, I cut pictures of this place, even though it wasn't for sale. I was like, I want something like that. It happened so fast, though, once you got aligned and got clear. Well, yeah. We, yeah. It, not only did it happen fast, you actually told me. I pasted it on the board and I gave it to you. And you said, oh, JP, I think it just went up for sale. I get to use this environment whenever <laughs> I want, when I want to use this for filming, because I, I helped, I was an instrumental piece of you finding this location. Yeah. And what this place represents besides all the dream, and it really connects to that why of, like, again, energy, empowerment, healing of people. But also, uh, again, when you look around my office, you guys will do a virtual thing. It was transparency. We went through a period of financial, like what part of Thrive, what Thrive's ethos was, was trying to be a better fiduciary because at the time, when I started the company, there were some bad people out there doing bad things with people's money. And how would we remember that we are really a fiduciary to investors first and our interests second? And literally the windows and the physical manifestation of this place was a core value that I wanted the company to stand for. And to this day, the transparency and these big windows and the trees are more than just a, a pretty spot. It's the ethos and mission of the company. So again, When you start to manifest and you start to like put things on paper and you know why you're doing it with a deep emotional thing, it's amazing what can be created. There's a saying in martial arts, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. But I think you got to flip that. When the teacher or the leader is ready, the students and the clients appear. And I told you, be a sensei of your business. You be that energy. You hold that standard. You hold space. And those clients are going to come and you just kept growing and growing and you've attracted the most incredible community yeah. of people who are investing on purpose. True. Big time. Yeah. You became the sensei of this. Well, Woo! thank you. Thank you. It's pretty fun. <laughs> pretty awesome. That's emotional. Like I, I can yeah. feel it. As you we, did it, brother. <laughs> Freaking did well, we're it. doing it. Every day is doing it and we keep growing. And Your you team stop. is amazing. Thank you. But there is no finish line. So it's really fun. Now it's fun because now it's like, I realize that life has duality and there can be ups and downs, but it's when you get this far um, and you have the skills, again, there is a gratitude knowing that there's an impermanence to this, but there's also a lot of joy and a lot of passion because once you learn how to paint and manifest, then you get to really paint and manifest some cool things and you make all kinds of crazy fun things happen. And I just, at the point now, it's almost, I just feel like I'm a kid who's been great, gratefully been given the skills the knowledge and the health and the energy, which comes in form of money and health and all those things, that I get to even play and do this game even you know, more and more and try it now in different ways. So, but it all comes back to this. The purpose does change a little bit. Um, it evolves. I have a new one right now, which I'll, I'll say for another episode, 
which is an extension of where we started. It's a new challenge of a different aspect of love that I never even thought I would tackle in this lifetime that I'm having a lot of fun with, with my nonprofit, Veritas. Well, I would like to leave with this to see your leadership has been beautiful. Uh, you have a quality that I think is incredibly important for all leaders and all entrepreneurs. You've stayed humble. You've stayed humble and you've continued to find ways to serve others. You have been generous. These are the most important qualities. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you for sticking by me, your passion, your caring. And uh, now you're spreading the message to lots of other people. And I invest on purpose with you JP. Do. <laughs> <laughs> thank Amazing. you, Sensei. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Mm. Nice. Thank you. Thank you.